Hello, my name is Elizabeth Salazar, and today I'm going to be taking you through a lesson that meets the world history seventh grade standard 7.3.4, understand the importance of both overland trade and maritime expeditions between China and other civilizations in the Mongol and Ming dynasty. At the end of this lesson, my students will be able to explain in one paragraph the ways that the Silk Road generated change within the societies that connected it. And they'll do this through various ways. I chose the technology Pear Deck to integrate into this lesson because it takes a normal direct instruction PowerPoint and makes it super interactive for students, which is really important in history where our lessons can tend to be a little bit boring, this brings it to life. So through Pear Deck, students are able to use their visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning and be engaged that way. So in a previous lesson, my students would have been engaged in geography and vocabulary of Asia and of this unit. So they have a bit of previous knowledge when it comes to geography and vocabulary. To recall that information, I would start my students off with a map, an interactive map that allows them to move their indicators to where they believe these locations are. After recalling and activating that recall, we can start to add on to the previous knowledge the students already have. We can do this through photos. So we have two photos that the students are going to analyze and make predictions about what they think they're going to be learning about. So these two photos will hopefully lead students to writing about how people are connected through trade. After we have students make predictions and share with their shoulder partner and collaborate a little bit, then I can give them actual information to compare their predictions to. And once they have some solid examples, then we can ask them to create a visual representation of something that they think can be traded along the Silk Road. Here is a bit of direct instruction. Again, it connects some of the thoughts that students might be having in their predictions to factual information. We can discuss out loud how the information connects to each other. Um, in order to check for understanding th from our verbal instruction, I can ask students a quick true or false question and they can answer in live time on their end. After giving them the time to make predictions about what they're learning, I would show them two YouTube videos, one about a history, and it really gives them the visual representation of specific items that were traded along the Silk Road. So after the video, students will have time to talk with their partners and do a bit of recall of what they remember. After they recall, um, I wanted to slow it down for students who might not have been able to keep up with the video, and I wanted to give them a photo set of things that were traded along the Silk Road, and giving them this visual gives them another chance to encode those visuals into their memory and kind of connect any predictions that they might have had before. After they are able to connect that information, I give my students one last opportunity to solidify and kind of narrow down their choices and choose four things that were traded along the Silk Road that they know in concrete detail now. We verbally will go over the pros and cons of overland trade and maritime trade, and I ask students to identify what overland and what maritime trade were. So for maritime trade, they would put anything here in the ocean because maritime means ocean. We then bring it to today. How does this connect to today? And students are asked to collaborate with each other and give some examples of how the Silk Road might play today in today's society. And finally, we answer our essential question through collaboration and I can immediately check for understanding. And then we segue into our next lesson, which will be a gallery walk with the artifacts we just learned about.